Hi, in this talk entitled Demeaning EVs, we will talk about how to control for confounding variables at the group level and the importance of demeaning these regressors. In the advanced preprocessing talk, we saw examples of confounds that we can include as extra regressors in our single subject GLM. Here, we will see how to add confounds at the group level. For example, if we want to control our results for age or disease duration or any other variable. We can add such regressors to our group level design matrix, but we need to be careful about how to include them. And in particular, if and when we need to demean them. To do this, I'm going to show you a simple example. Here we have six subjects represented by six dots in the plot. On the y-axis, we have the bold contrast that we calculated at the single subject level in a certain voxel. And on the x-axis, we have our covariate, for example, age or reaction time. On the top left, we have our design matrix with two EVs, one for the group mean and one for the covariate. So let's assume that we are interested in the group mean controlling for age. First of all, we need to fit the model and the red line uh, represents our model fit. We then calculate the beta values, one for each EV. And as you can see here, also the graphical representations of those beta values. And then we set our contrast of interest. In this case, we are interested in the group mean covariating for age. So our contrast is one zero, which corresponds to beta one. Now beta one should then represent the mean bold contrast of our group. But as you can see, beta one in the plot is way below the center of this cloud of points, which should be the group average. And this is because our covariate has not been demeaned. And in this moment, beta one doesn't represent the mean, but a mix of the mean and the intercept of the slope. So you can see that even if the contrast is set up correctly, we would end up with the wrong interpretation of our results. What we need to do is demeaning the confound. So calculate the mean value across subjects, subtract that amount from each subject's value and use that in our design matrix. And now, as you can see, beta one does represent the group mean bold. This is to summarize what we just said with a table taken from Jeanette Mumford's website, where she provides many more useful example cases like this. So sticking with the simple example of the group mean, we can see again how the design matrix looks like, what does the fitted model look like, and then it will tell us for each contrast we may be interested in if demeaning changes the statistics and so if we should demean our EVs or not. The contrast we looked at before was the 1-0 contrast. And as you remember, yes, demeaning does change the statistics. And so to be able to interpret this contrast correctly, we should demean our EV. Now, if we look at the 0-1 contrast, it means that we are interested in the correlation with age rather than wanting to control for it. So we are now interested basically in beta r. So let's see if the stats change with demeaning. This is the version of our plot with no demeaning, and we can see that beta r corresponds to the slope of, of the fitting line. Now, this is what happens after demeaning. As you can see, the slope stays the same, so beta r doesn't change. So going back to the table, does demeaning change the stats for this contrast? No. However, is demeaning recommended? Well, our answer is why not? So since it doesn't matter if we demean or not, and since we usually set up multiple contrasts using the same design matrix, in order to be sure that the interpretation of our results will be valid independently from the contrast we set up, we would recommend demeaning. And this is also valid for variables like binary variables, so yes or no variables. We can assign one and zero, calculate the mean across all subjects and subtract that from each value. So to conclude, 
We can control for confound variables at the group level. Demeaning EVs can change the interpretation of the statistics. But because in cases where it is not necessary to demean, the interpretation doesn't change, demeaning is generally recommended.